What would you say is now the number one cause of death in the African American community? Heart disease. Oh, HIV AIDS. Uh, diabetes. Cancer. Uh, AIDS. I say heart disease. AIDS. From what I heard, it's probably AIDS. Probably heart disease. Heart disease. Uh, HIV. Gang violence. What if I told you the real answer was abortion? Oh. Since 1973, legal abortion has killed more African Americans than AIDS, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and violent crime combined. Every week, more blacks die in American abortion clinics than were killed in the entire Vietnam War. And the largest chain of abortion clinics in the United States is operated by Planned Parenthood. And what the elite knew was that the end of slavery would instantly release 4 million people into the economy who had been kept uneducated and effectively unemployable in what they were concerned about was that this was going to bankrupt the American economy. Taxes were going to go through the roof to take care of these people. Crime was going to be rampant. The prisons were going to be flooded. There was going to be this population overrun. The other fear that these people had was intermarriage between blacks and whites would lead to a loss of racial purity. The question was, what were they going to do about it? And their initial thought was that they would just send all the slaves back to Africa. This plan was called colonization. But in the end, colonization proved to be unworkable, and the idea was eventually scrapped. But about that same time, a new philosophy was emerging in the world. It was called eugenics. And for some, it seemed like the perfect solution to what had become known as the Negro Dilemma. I do not join in the belief that the African is our equal in brain or in heart, that if we can't possess ourselves of his services, we have an equal right to utilize them to our advantage. Francis Galton, 1857. Francis Galton is known as the father of eugenics. He actually coined the phrase eugenics. So he believed in trying to increase those he felt were superior in stock and decrease those he felt were inferior. Francis Galton came from a very wealthy family, a family that made its wealth from the slave trade. And what a lot of people don't know is that Francis Galton was a cousin to Charles Darwin. Francis Galton took Charles Darwin's philosophies and ideas and thoughts and he actually put them into practice and that's what we know today as eugenics. Eugenics and evolution are related in that they both see what they consider to be the um, highest form of primate, such as the gorilla, as almost indistinguishable from what they consider the lowest form of human, the African and the Aborigine. We are paying for and even submitting to the dictates of an ever-increasing, unceasingly spawning class of human beings who never should have been born at all. Margaret Sanger, 1923. The laws of nature require the obliteration of the unfit, and human life is valuable only when it is of use to the community or race. Madison Grant, 1916, co-founder, American Eugenics Society. The black man has never been a competitor, but has always been subservient to the white race. And just so long as he remains subservient, his position is secure. And just so soon as he becomes a competitor, his fate is sealed. Dr. Benjamin Hayes, eugenicist, 1905. First, the white man tells me to sit in the back of the bus. Now it looks like he wants me to sleep under the bed. Back in the days of slavery, black folks couldn't grow kids fast enough for white folks to harvest. Now that we got a little taste of power, white folks wants to call a moratorium on having babies. Comedian Dick Gregory, Ebony Magazine, 1971. All of a sudden, we were given this free, free thing from the Society of America abortion. 78% of your free abortion clinics were placed in black and urban areas for the purpose of something free of charge from a racist society. As uh, to put it in words of one pro-abortionist, we don't need so many Negroes anymore. There's no more cotton to pick. His feelings about black people, this was one way of doing it as a social benefit, if you will. We're here to help you. Black women, and let it be stated, black women never demonstrated, demanded, or even requested the right to an abortion. We've been asking for the right to decent housing, the right to education, in fact, the right to health care. And all we've been given for your charge is the right to kill our unborn child. Something new was being introduced to American society. It was called the birth control bill. And the eugenics movement quickly saw it as the perfect solution for controlling the population of people they had always seen as oversexed, unsophisticated, and lazy. This bill was enthusiastically embraced by whites. It was generally rejected by blacks. Despite the fact that Planned Parenthood focused its marketing on the African American community and located the vast majority of its facilities in black neighborhoods. And many blacks did not want to reduce their numbers. In fact, they saw high birth rates as the most effective way to increase their power in the American political system. The increasing number of African Americans were becoming suspicious that a hidden agenda was behind the birth control revolution. Even those who once supported the idea of population control were beginning to sense that it actually meant black population control. The increasing number of African Americans were becoming suspicious that a hidden agenda was behind the birth control revolution. Even those who once supported the idea of population control were beginning to sense that it actually meant black population control. This feeling was evident in June of 1970 when the Black Caucus walked out of the first National Congress on Optimum Population and Environment being held in Chicago. 
Felton Alexander of the National Urban League and the chairman of the Black Caucus said the action was taken because of clear and unmistakable evidence that the purpose of the conference was to legitimize the extermination of the black population. By this time, many other civil rights advocates were beginning to see the same thing. Contraceptives will become a form of drug warfare against the helpless in this nation. Jesse Jackson, 1971. There is a campaign to bombard the poor with pills and potions. If this movement continues, we soon may be accused of fighting poverty by eliminating the poor and overcoming hunger by removing the hungry. New York Congressman Hugh Carey, 1966. Under the cover of an alleged campaign to alleviate poverty, white supremacist Americans and their dupes are pushing an all-out drive to put rigid birth control measures into every black home. No such drive exists within the white American world. Black Unity Party, 1968. Birth control and sterilization in the wrong hands would be more deadly to Negroes than all the tanks, ride guns, cattle prods, billy clubs, and shackles we have overcome in the